Hello, Ragers, and welcome back to another episode of Rage It. Today, we're going to be taking a look at r slash fat logic. When will it be illegal for a doctor to weigh you? I don't see why it matters, and the number of people it doesn't bother, for one reason or another, seems like probably very, very, very statistically small. Give us a break. Medication dosages are based on weight. Yeah, also that type of information is good for tracking trends. It could also help to show other things that you might be more or less likely to be susceptible for. Weight is a pretty important figure to know. Not all fat people have health problems, though, and lots of thin people also have health problems. I'm morbidly obese, but my EKGs have been clean. My blood pressure is normal. I don't have high cholesterol. The only health issue I have is gout, and I use a leaf and a concentrated cherry juice for that. Yeah, that's true, just like not all smokers have cancer. But just because not all fat people have health problems doesn't mean it's something that should be monitored and addressed. Fat people are statistically nicer and more full of love than skinny people. Skinny people do not interact. Hashtag, if you're skinny and offended, do not message me. Hashtag, if you're fat, I love you. Hashtag, fat positivity. Hashtag, fat positive. Hashtag, the P. I would be very interested to see where this person got their statistics, because I do not believe that at all. Been on a diet for two weeks, and proud to say I lost 14 days of happiness. I need to remember, diets don't work and not to waste my life again. All right, three things wrong with this. First one is everyone has a diet. A diet is just what you eat. Some people have healthy diets, some people don't. Second, if you lost happiness from eating on a diet, then maybe you should reevaluate the diet or reevaluate what makes you happy. Maybe find other happiness in your life. And third would be if your diet didn't work, you're doing your diet wrong. If you feel compelled to comment on a loved one or stranger's weight because you can see how unhealthy their lifestyle is, you have two options. One, keep your mouth shut. Or two, gouge out your eyes because it's none of your darn business. Hashtag my body, my rules. Hashtag body positivity. Hashtag fat phobia. Hashtag fat women. Hashtag fat. I bet this is the type of person that if they had a friend or family member that they found out was cutting themselves or something, they would just let them do what they want because hashtag it's their body. It's up to you guys. I stopped drinking water and began losing weight. Turns out my body wasn't processing water properly and it all retained as water weight. Don't get me wrong, I drink a glass before bed, but I only drink juices and coffee really. I've tried different diets and working out. Turns out water is my enemy. Everyone's body works differently. That makes no sense. Juice and coffee are just flavored water. As I said, everyone's body is different. Yes, juice is water to a point, but it has vitamins and etc. that my body can process easier than basic and flat water. I've been told to add brown sugar to water to help process it by a doctor. Every person's body is different. And it's just like food. Not everyone can eat what everyone else can gluten-free, vegan, fruitarian. Some people even consume mostly meat. It might not make sense to you, but it has worked for me. Don't knock it till you try it. I didn't think something so simple would help me. Yeah, that's kind of the opposite of how it works. People that have water weight, they keep water on because they aren't drinking enough water, and so their body stores it. That is like saying the civil rights movement has gone too far. The fat acceptance movement is about people with average and fatter bodies being accepted as human, as worthy, as lovable, as beautiful, as deserving, as equal. I don't think anyone would say that a fat person is not human or any of those other things. The only thing that fat people are not is healthy. Y'all hold up. No man should tell us women what plus size is, okay? Because a size 12 to 18 women can fit into their 38 by 30 pants. That's not plus size for a man, that's slender. So while y'all judge a woman for the size of their pants, just remember their pant size is different than women's. Sorry, anyone in a size double zero to four is unhealthy and is a reason for heart issues, eating disorders, depression, etc. Five to 12 is the healthy range, you're welcome. <laughs> Alright, for starters, a 38-inch waist is not slender for a man. 
maybe average, probably pushing plus size at that point, but certainly not slender. Second, you also have to take into consideration there are biological differences between men and women. The diet industry wants you to believe that the fact that the vast majority of people fail diets long term is because they didn't try hard enough. The reality is the vast majority of people fail diets because their bodies are physiologically wired to resist them. <laughs> That's just straight up not true. Most diets, if you look at them, are raw natural ingredients like vegetables and fruits and lean proteins. All of the stuff that these people are eating are processed sugars and crap that goes in and destroys your body. The medical world is so fat phobic that even though it's far deadlier to have a low BMI than a high one, a lower weight patient practically has to be a crumbled pile of bones to elicit any concern from a doctor, but a patient who's even slightly heavy will be told their weight is a major health risk. It is true that having too low of a BMI can have health risks, but like for men, it's under 6% body fat that's safe. I don't know anybody with that low body fat. But I know a lot of people that are overweight, so we address the problem that is nationwide. I have two coping techniques, smoking and overeating. One of them causes people to look at me disgustedly, judge my health, give me advice on it that I didn't ask for, and to tell me it's going to kill me. The other one destroys my lungs. Well, they both destroy your body, and people should be giving you advice on both of them, because both of them are bad for you. Dear doctor, how do you expect me to lose weight if all the pills you prescribe for me have to be taken with food? Um, because the food doesn't need to be processed sugar, it can be, like, healthy food. So you think the reason everyone is fat and sick is simply because they don't know that calories in, calories out is a thing? I think it's more like they know it, but their hunger wins. Seriously, how is there people telling me that calories in, calories out works when calories in has been the mainstream advice for decades and we are now fatter nation than ever? End hunger equals end obesity. The way you end hunger is by filling up on fat and cutting out carbs. And you're wrong to say that the keto only works by using calories in, calories out. That's totally wrong. A single ribeye steak is 1,500 calories shaking my head. Yeah, calories in, calories out has been the mainstream advice for decades because it's right. The problem is that people don't follow it. You can go out to a restaurant and get a 3,000 calorie meal for a single meal. I got kicked out of a body slash fat positivity group for my face seeming too thin. I feel you. What the hell? How can it be a body positivity group if they're kicking people out for having too thin a face? Shouldn't all bodies be accepted? It's specifically a group for larger body people, so even though I'm over 200 pounds, I'm apparently privileged because my face can allow to pass as thin on the internet. It's bad when people that are supposed to be in the same group as you are the ones judging you. Did you know that feeling uncomfortably full is part of normal eating? Relax, it's okay to feel full. <laughs> I mean, this is just stupid. If it's uncomfortable, your body's telling you it's uncomfortable for a reason. Calories in fruits. This should really be the least of your concerns. Calories in fruit do not matter. You know why? It's because when it comes down to it, unless you're eating 10 pounds of fruit a day, the calories consumed are the least important factor when it comes to nutrition. I mean, don't get me wrong, relatively speaking, fruits aren't that bad for you. But to say that you don't need to monitor the amount of calories you're eating in fruits is just absolutely ridiculous. It all comes down to how many calories you're eating. If there's one thing I would change about medicine, it'd be to abolish the BMI. It's bad science. We know that your weight is not a health risk. Smoking, eating crap food, inactivity, those are health risks. Lots of thin people are inactive, crap-eating smokers. I will admit that BMI is not the greatest science, as it's just a general rule based on weight and height, and doesn't take into consideration your body composition or your actual body fat percentage. But to say that weight is not a health factor or health risk is just absolutely incorrect. Hi, 
Do you have any advice or resources on how to find fat-friendly doctors? I avoid going to the doctor for the very reason it makes me too anxious. But I'm having a ton of back pain and I think I need to get it addressed. But I know that most doctors are going to say it's 100% weight related and refuse to help me. Could you imagine if someone went to the doctor and they had a knife sticking out of their stomach and they're like, oh, I have stomach pain, but I'm sure it's not this knife. I absolutely refuse to spend any more of my life shrinking my body to fit a made-up beauty ideal that only exists so corporations can make money from me chasing it. I've got more important stuff to do. Except that eating less costs less money and being active doesn't cost any money. So how is a corporation just trying to get money from you? I can't change my diet and lose weight. That doesn't work for me. Movement does. That's why I have to walk. I lost 80 pounds simply by cutting down my calories and tracking what I eat daily. I've lost weight walking before. I stopped in 2016, but I used to walk three miles per day. Okay, whatever you say, genius. My body doesn't work like that. I could do the same thing and not lose a pound. One of the easiest and best things you can do when you're trying to lose weight is to track your calories and what you're eating. A lot of people can cut a thousand calories just by understanding what they're eating and maybe eating healthier, maybe not even less, just healthier. Well, if you want to burn a thousand calories from exercise, if you're walking, that's equivalent of like four hours of walking to be able to burn a thousand calories, which you could do just by understanding the food you're eating. I do want to throw out there that this video is not to discourage or hurt anyone based off of their body. This is to look at the logic that some of these people use and just how absolutely incorrect it is. If you guys like this video, smash that like and subscribe button. If not, let me know why down in the comments so I can make the next video better. I put out new videos on a daily basis, so subscribe so you get the notifications when I put out a new video tomorrow.